price action trading strategies. Ian is going to talk through his methodology for using the charts, and I believe we're going to be looking at the, the live markets as well. Antonio in sync with the Fineco PowerDesk platform here. So, Ian, I will hand over to you and uh, let's have a look at the price action. And after Ian has completed, we're going to have a short uh, Q&A session, traders question time. Uh, so, if there are any other questions you want to ask, that will be the time for us to do that. And then we'll have a quick uh, drink afterwards. So, over to you, Ian. Thank you. Thank you very much, Simon. And thank you, everyone, for being here this afternoon. Um, I'm sure you all enjoyed Andrew's talk very much and presentation, and it was great fundamentals. We all know that fundamentals are very, very important. But what I am here to talk about today is using the technicals. So if we can put the technicals and the fundamentals together, um, we're certainly in a winning road, so to speak, I hope. Um, the advantage of technicals, as I will demonstrate, is that we will know exactly when we're wrong based on what a chart is. Fundamentals are fantastic, but if you're just trading totally, and I mean Andrew mentioned this also, solely on, on, on fundamentals, there are, you know, when are you actually wrong? So it's great when you can actually amalgamate both of them together. I'll tell you a little bit about myself later on in the presentation, but just as, as um, Simon has already said, and by the way, thank you very much for your introduction, Simon. Uh, my name is Ian Foster, and I'm from BeWinningTrader.com. And today we're going to talk about building income using price action trading strategies. Now, there is the um, disclaimer, this disclaimer, everyone. You're aware of the risks involved with trading, and my aim is obviously to help you all eliminate those risks as much as possible because we're going to know based on technical analysis when we are actually wrong. So everybody can read that, I'm quite sure, and are aware of it, and we move on. So at this stage, I'm going to ask the question, why price action? Well, number one, it's not a lagging indicator. You're putting the probabilities in your favor. You're going to know exactly when you're wrong. It's very easy, everyone. We all know when we're correct, don't we? We're making some money but we want to know exactly technically when we're wrong. And then by knowing when we're wrong, it means that it is quite easy from where we can implement money and risk controls and strategies within our trading plan. And that is the reason it is price action trading. Now on price action trading, we know nowadays, folk, it is the buzzword. Let me tell you all sincerely, that when I was first introduced to price action trading, price action trading was far from being the buzzword. And what is quite frustrating from my perspective at times is when I see and listen and hear people talking about price action trading and particular analysis within the price action trading. And in my strong belief, that particular analysis is not being described correctly. But anyway, what is price action trading? It is understanding and analyzing past and present life price movements of the chart correctly and accurately. And that is the key word here, folks. Accurately. Okay? And this knowledge then equates into the probability of the next move being more likely up or down. And it is said there are two ways in which to lose money trading. Inaccurate analysis, and then implementation of that analysis. So the objective of me today is to demonstrate to you, as either clients, potential clients of Finico, is eliminating the inaccuracies of our analysis as quickly as possible. Because if we were able to remove those, that goes into the old adage folk of letting your profits run and cut your losses. Now that is a very easy said statement, but in reality, it can be completely different, okay? But with price action and reading the charts from a technical analysis point of view, that should not be the case. My price action trading methodology, there are two components that confirm the price 
time sanction methodology. Firstly, it is learning how to read the basic price action movements of a chart correctly, and then knowing how to act based on those or that analysis of that particular chart and knowing how to act accordingly. And secondly, which is where we have, I believe, something pretty, pretty good, um, dare I say it, although I'm saying that myself, it's learning how to confirm a particular chart pattern that forms in every market and time frame. Now, do not be frightened when you see the word chart pattern because it is not like looking for flag patterns. It's not like looking for triangles. What we're looking for, everyone, if you hold your right or left hand up to the ceiling, we're looking for this middle finger high. If you put it down to the ground, we're looking for this middle finger low. Okay? And this is what I call the vertical bar trading pattern. And it is the positioning of the vertical bar trading pattern highs and lows to confirm exactly when the new trend begins and confirms when that trend finishes. As I'm going to demonstrate to you, it enables trades to be regularly picked to perfection. So again, whether we're using the basics of price action or whether we're using the vertical bar trading pattern to trade, and this is across the board folks, this is not just Forex, this can be Forex, this can be commodities, this can be stocks, this can be ETFs, you name it. And the same methodology works as I will explain to you in all markets, all different markets. So just to reiterate, my price action trading methodology enables exact entry points, exact stop loss points, or sorry, exact exit points, which then equate into exact stop loss points. Exactly to the very one point or to the very one pip, we know exactly when we're wrong. So we're eliminating any of our inaccurate analysis as quickly as possible. And the method that I'm going to show you is not subjective. And by that I mean that if we were sitting in this room today and we had half a dozen idiot wave theorists up here, and we asked them to analyze a market, they would probably give us all three or four different answers. Some of them might be in sync, some of them might not. And the reason being is because one could say we're in wave three, one could say we're in an ABC correction of wave five, one could say we're only starting, blah, 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 etc., etc. So therefore, it's subjective, and it's subjective from any particular point that they begin, that that move begins with. With our price action methodology, it is not. So therefore, what I mean is that if you're trading a daily chart on a particular instrument, any particular instrument, and I'm trading the same daily chart, it would be impossible for me to have a buy signal and you to have a sell or short signal. Okay, we're all going to be in sync. Impossible. The only way that it would be possible, well, and I have to put this in, and that is, if your data was totally wrong to mine, so in other words, if there was some glitch, but even little differences, somebody turns around and make in, what happens if my data stopped an hour ago or your data stopped an hour ago? We're going to have different signals, of course we are, but I'm talking about everything being equal, we will have exactly the same signals. A little bit about myself, though. As I've already said, my name's Ian Foster, and Simon's introduced me. I've been trading the financial markets now for over 30 years. A little story about me, and this is just to give you a little insight that gives me the authority to speak to you all today, okay? So a little insight how I get into the markets, and I don't know what your individual <laughs> reasons or, or other um, is for you having an interest or trading, as most of you think are, I know there's one or two who have said they've never traded before. But it was actually, um, obviously we've all, we've all some interest in which we want to, we, we, like the, we like the ebb and flow where we want to make money. And I was no different many, many years ago, but when I probably, I don't even know whether I had hair then, but anyway, I can say when I was only 20, but anyway, maybe a bit older. So there was a particular, um, a particular businessman in my local village, and as you can tell, I'm not from London, I'm from Northern Ireland, living in Nottingham this last 23 years. But anyway, 
Um, he had been obviously buying and selling shares, and he had told me about him doing exceptionally well on a particular penny share. And I happened to say in passing, I says, if the opportunity ever arises again, it has to be Robin, I says, maybe you would let me know. In those days, I was an estate agent folk uh, in our local town or village, we call it probably in England, in Northern Ireland, in County Fermanagh. And he happened to come into my office one Monday morning and he said, Ian, I believe that particular opportunity that I told you about, in fact, with the exact same share that I had the previous success with, has, is, is now um, ripe again. So um, I said, Thank you very much. He told me what the share was, and I don't know whether any of you can remember this share, it's no longer with us. It's a share called Rotoprint. Does anybody ever remember Rotoprint? Yes, right. So, to cut a long story short, I hadn't even a brokerage account that particular time. So I says, right, how am I going to act in this? I'd work very quickly. But my accountants, which are still over in Northern Ireland, in a place called Newry County Down, there was a brokerage firm called McGuinness & Co, which were two brothers, a family business. And I happened to ring up and ask for Mr. McGuinness, and I said who I was, and I said, look, I want to buy some rotor print shares, but I want to buy them pretty quickly. I haven't got an account which wouldn't happen today, we know, but this is exactly what happened. I said, if you need a reference, by the way, bring up Fielding and Prescott, the charge accountants, are my accountants, and either Robin or Roy Prescott will give you, um, because my, they were my father's accountants too, but of course he passed away that year. But that <coughs> happened, and I got buying over print shares at eight and three quarter pence. And from that Monday morning, which was the beginning of the new account period, until the Wednesday, Rota print shares had rallied 4p. And every penny that they had rallied, I was making 500 pounds. Right? So Mr. McGuinness was getting a little bit anxious come Wednesday morning and he rung my office and he says, Mr. Foster, I believe, he says, that maybe now might be the time to sell Rota print. And all I had then, folk, was a small portable TV in my office with the telly text on it for the prices. Delayed. Oh, yes. Yes, delayed, that's right, <laughs> Rodeo, yes. So anyway, rotor print shares, obviously, from the Monday to the Wednesday, went up. And at this stage, they might have been showing 12 and a quarter pence that particular morning. But anyway, they never showed on my teletext screen 12 and three quarter pence. I said to them, if they hit 12 and three quarter pence, I give you the instruction to sell. In other words, I had four full pence, which was 2,000 pounds worth, okay? With no money down, because Monday morning happened to be the first day of the new account period, so therefore it was a two week rolling period, then it's different today we know. And anyway, lo and behold, I got a phone call after lunch from a secretary to say we have sold your shares, Mr. Ford, for 12 and three quarter fee. I'd made 2,000 pounds, and a couple of weeks later, I got a check for 1,890 pounds. So obviously that gave me the bug for trading. The flip side to that, the gentleman that told me, true story, to buy them on the Monday morning, didn't buy them on the Monday morning. He bought them on the Wednesday. Okay, true. At 12, it probably bought some of my shares that I sold. <laughs> right? Rotor Print started to go down. And instead of me investing, which would have been £5,000 with the pay phone, he was investing, he had invested in 50000 Wow. Rotor Print fell and fell and fell. So much so that eventually Rotor Print were suspended a number of months later and he lost his whole £50,000. So I knew nothing. And I was taking advice from somebody else. True story, unfortunately. Okay. So, but it didn't give me the bug to trade. And with that bug, then I started buying and selling shares. And lo and behold, folks, the 1987 stock market crash came. And there I was Ian sitting with shares up here. And they were now down in the ground. Okay. So it took me between selling those shares and waiting for a few years getting out of them. But derivatives had started to interest me greatly. Options. And we're all very aware, I know on the very fine um, trader program that Fineco have, they've got um, futures, etc., etc. But in those days, and I know that probably a lot of you here today are very familiar with the spread betting companies that we have, they were very much in their infancy. IMG might have been just about going on a commercial basis, okay? Um, so, therefore, at that particular time, the FTSE future. Each point was equivalent to 25 pounds. So I had this notion in my head that I was going to be rich very, very quickly. So you know what the 
score was, everyone. I hope not too, too many of you can relate to it, but it didn't work out so well. Okay. And then I started saying, well, I need to learn. Now, it's not like today. We haven't got the internet in the way that we have today. It's very much its infancy. In fact, it's probably, again, the old modem dialogue, not even in a computer, et cetera, et cetera. And I did attend quite a few seminars, but each of those seminars, I was learning something, but I was not, in my opinion, learning enough. Because nothing that was actually coming up. Each seminar I left, I was not coming away. What I was looking for, and what, dare I say, others were looking for, was a methodology, some way in which I could read a market that was going to give me an indication of whether I should be buying that instrument or whether I should be selling it. And I was not coming and was not getting that from any of the seminars, not coming away with that information. I then, luckily enough, was introduced to price action trading. I've already said it was nowhere near the buzzword that it is today. And I could see quickly how it was beginning to turn my whole trading around. And there I said, certainly my insight of being able to read a market, etc., etc., it was it really immensely helped me immediately. All right? No holy grail, folk. It doesn't exist. So be aware of that. All right? Oh, I'm sure you're going to show you a very powerful methodology. It's not a holy grail. So then I began teaching it to others because once I realized it was beneficial to me, I then realized it would be beneficial to others. The same people that were attending the seminars that I had been attending, and that's when I began showing and mentoring and teaching way back in 1998. Okay? So understanding the basics of price action begins with reading the signals within the single variable bars. Some of this can be quite boring, folk. Don't let it be boring. It's very, very important. Dual vertical bars, inside vertical bars, and outside vertical bars. Has anybody in here, by the way, heard of any of these statements? Inside vertical bars, outside vertical bars, anybody that's been trading the market? Yes? Some of you. Good. Now, it's all right knowing the information, but what you also want to know, why? What's the point in you knowing whether we've got a bullish vertical bar or a bearish vertical bar? We want to know what that actually means. Okay, so I will show you in the basics of price action even what that means and how you can act on that itself. Before I go any further, I want to also state that all my price action analysis is done by reading the open high, low, and close bars, OHLC. Okay, not the candlestick chart as you see here. And I'll explain to you very briefly why. This is an OHLC. Bar to the left. And what I am more interested in in my price action analysis is the close in relation to the high or the close in relation to the low. You see it very, very, very easily on this particular OHLC chart. You do not see it so easy on the candlestick. And let me explain what I mean by that. On the candlestick, you've either got an open body or a closed body. An open body is when the close of that particular price, that candle, is above the open. A closed body is when it is the close is below the open. But that does not at all times clearly indicate where the close is in relation to the high or the low. And let me tell you, if we're just reading the candles, based on the body, simply, you can have an open body like this indicating a bullish candle, but that may still have a close that is closer to the low of that particular bar. Okay? It may, the open could be down here, the close could be there, it could be an open body candle, but it would close could be still closer to the low. And let me explain to you why that is important. A bullish bar as regards a single vertical bar is a bullish bar. This little pick to the right is the close of a vertical bar. And this little pick to the left is the open. This is the low and this is the high. So can we assume everyone, because we're in London, that this represents one day bar of, say, the FTSE? So I've already said to you, say in the candlestick, the open is not important to me as much as the close. And the reason being is because the opening price is the oldest price. 
The FTSE opened this morning at 8 a.m., but the closing price this afternoon at 4.30 p.m. It is the closing price that confirms the price action of that particular bar. It confirms whether there's more buying pressure or whether there's more selling pressure, whether we've got a bullish bar or whether we've got a bearish bar. Oh, all right. So with this particular bar here, and we're assuming again that this is a daily bar. That is a bullish bar because it is close, closer to the high than to the low. What does a bullish bar mean? A bullish bar means that we have a higher probability of taking the next day, because it's a daily bar we're assuming, the next day it should break to the high, or certainly it should break, take the high of that particular daily bar out with greater probability, remember we're working on probabilities, before it breaks the low. So if you have a scenario such as this, that you the next day the market traded within inside this particular bar, and the next day it traded lower again, and the next day lower again. On each occasion, all this is doing is giving us a greater opportunity from which to have and take long or buy positions. Because the only time that that bullish bar fails is when that low will be taken out to the downside without the high being taken out to the upside. And then if that happened, folk, that's like flipping a coin on its head. It's like turning a bullish scenario into a bearish scenario. So if that happens, so therefore, I'm um, going to look at real examples here, or a real example here. I use it this week. So if you analyze a single vertical bar, and certainly, as I've said on, on Saturday evening, people that were in my presentation down at, at Simon's event in the comic rooms. When it comes to the weekend, analyzing single vertical bars and looking at the weekly bar scenarios, the exact same thing applies. Because, again, although we're analyzing a single vertical bar, and there's more to trading folk than analyzing a single vertical bar, but we now know exactly to the very one point when we're wrong. So say, for example, you were trading a single vertical bar, and that was the pound dollar cable, and you went long. So the object, why would you go long? You went long, you would go long, because the probability of that market breaking to the upside, breaking the high before breaks to the low is much greater. Therefore, your stop, if you were just analyzing that single bar and using nothing else along with it, your stop would be down here, one or two. Once it breaks up by one hundredth of a pip, you're wrong. But I'd always allow two or three pips. That is the power of a single vertical bar at the very basics of price action. On this side here, we have got a bearish vertical bar and the exact same thing, except it is now giving us a probability that that was a daily bar that this market should break to the downside before it breaks to the upside. Now, on this point, to cover some questions that may be asked, a weekly vertical bar will be more powerful than a daily. A daily will be more powerful. This is analyzing a single vertical bar. A single will, or, or a six, or a daily vertical bar will be more powerful than a 60 minute. A 60 minute will be more powerful than a 15 minute. A 15 minute will be more powerful than a five minute, etc., etc. Now, inside vertical bars, outside vertical bars, just not to spend too much time. An inside vertical bar is when you've got a lower high and a higher low. And what an inside vertical bar, if you see those folk on a larger time frame chart, especially, let's assume we're talking about dailies at this stage, that's telling you two things, or one of two things. It's telling you rather that the market <laughs> is perhaps taking a breather, a bit like a swimmer, starting to swim underneath the water and he's in a long, long swim, and he wants to come up to get a breath and go back down again. So he's telling you one or two things. That that market is either taking a breather to go and continue in its previous direction. So if the market had been rallying, in other words, it had been a trending upward move, and you see a daily, and you see an inside vertical bar, that's telling you, well, hold on, it's a little bit in wary mode, because the market's either preparing itself to change trend, or it's actually taking a breather to go in the direction. So therefore, aggressively, you could create the breadth of the inside 